Batman is a franchise that has been rebooted and reimagined way too many times to count. It has had some A-list actors don that cape and either turn into a meme or a staple of the franchise. It seems like there's no stopping the man bat and they're pretty much gonna be making films till Kingdom Come. I mean, even the Batman trailer is incredible and it has me more excited than ever to see this take on Batman. Still, after the Batman is come and gone, we're gonna see a new take on the classic character. Since on this channel we cast and recast potential franchise reboots or live actions, it seems fitting that we do Batman. Not only Batman, but a potential franchise within the Batman universe, but one that has a specific take, much like the Batman. Now, the most recent iteration of this character being in the Batman has gone with the Cape Crusader being in a second year of wearing the cape. And it's going to pretty much show Batman from scratch and being very young. One would argue that they would change it up the next time we tackle the character. Therefore, I'm gonna cast Batman how I actually like him best. In his 40s, grizzled and lived in, I wanna explore some wonderful storylines that we've yet to see in live action, like Red Hood and Death in the Family, specifically the ones that I know that Robert Pattinson's version couldn't tackle. This will be a little bit similar to the version that we previously explored with Ben Affleck, but they already had a dead Robin and already kind of bit off a little bit more than I'd like to explore. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the casting of the Batman, even Ben Affleck in the role. And honestly, some of those roles in the Batman, like Paul Dano for the Riddler has always been my favorite choice, but still it's fun to talk about hypotheticals and alternative castings. As always, there will be multiple episodes within the series, but today we are tackling Batman and his supporting cast. Next, we will move on to the many Robins and then obviously more into the Batman universe and later to the villains. But today we are talking about Batman, Alfred, Commissioner Gordon, and Lucius Fox. So let's recast the Bat. First off, we have Commissioner Gordon, a role in my opinion that Gary Oldman crushed. He's popped up time and time again in live action, cartoons, and, and many franchises, honestly. But when I just think of Commissioner Gordon, I think of Oldman's take. I really like the choice of Jeffrey Wright to take on this role, and I think he will do an amazing job. But if we're looking for an older, more grizzled Commissioner Gordon, like we're trying to set up, we need someone who's a working man, someone who isn't afraid to get their hands dirty and won't back down, someone who is the moral compass of the film and puts in the work to make Gotham a better place for him and his family. I do want that more grizzled version, but I also want someone who can translate their professionalism and their expertise, and they already have a relationship with Batman. I went with Brian Cranston, who is yet to take on a comic book role of this size, but I think Commissioner Gordon is almost too perfect for him. He has that look I'm going for, he has that voice, and he has the gravitas for something like this. I just believe him and want to follow him and know he's doing things for good. He can play soft and warm around his family, or play that cold and angry within the harsh Gotham. He's my first and only choice for this role. O'Donnell. Somebody's responsible. When things happen, Jack, I'm responsible. We need to confirm those seven tickets out of Toronto, Swiss Air. And he shut that down. I say it's back on. I can't do it. It's backstopped. Wait, 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 wait. What the hell are you talking about? Backstop? What the hell does that mean? Carter's got to say yes for us to get the tickets. So Brian Cranston as Commissioner Gordon. Next up, we have Lucius Fox. I actually believe Jeffrey Wright is actually more perfect and would have been great for this. He's actually my first choice for Lucius rather than Commissioner Gordon. But still, if we're looking elsewhere, I want someone who has that gentle touch of Lucius Fox, but can be commanding on screen. We need someone who can show they can run that business, but also show they have intelligence and can eventually come up with prototypes such as the Batwing that Lucius created. I want Giancarlo Esposito, who has definitely shown us he has the voice and the persona to bring something like this to life. Now, he's definitely lent more towards the villainous side in past roles, but you can see he has has the commanding nature as well as that intelligence and as we've seen in the boys it shows that he can really take on that leadership role within a company that you are under a misconception that we are a superhero company we are not what we are really is a pharmaceutical company and you are not our most valuable asset that would be our confidential formula for compound v which you man child that you are released into the wild I think he could slow things down, soften up, and really do something wonderful here. So Giancarlo Esposito as Lucius Fox. 
Next up, we have Alfred, our main man who is there for Bruce through the thick and thin. Now, I have many choices for this role, but unfortunately, I think we have to go a little bit older. If Batman is in his 40s, that means Alfred should roughly be in his 80s. I know there's the typical, oh dear, an older actor dying, he's too old for this role, but this is a hypothetical, so there's no reason not to go that old. Now, I actually love Alfred in every single live action, but for different reasons. Jeremy Irons is great for that more analytical version. Michael Caine really nailed that emotional complexity. And even Michael Goff is really undervalued for his portrayal. But I've always loved that hint of sarcasm and humor to Alfred. We've seen a couple versions like even Kane or Goff that have kind of touched on this. What is the point of all those push-ups if you can't even lift a bloody log? But since Batman is an extremely dark character with very little humor, I think it's nice to have Alfred lighten things up from time to time. And it'd be great for the comic relief of the story. I went with a classic actor. That man is John Cleese. He fits in that English stereotype and is, of course, 80 years old, but he still has that wit and that humor. He's obviously best known for his work on Monty Python and his comedic genius, but I feel he actually has a soft yet harsh nature that would work really well for this role. So it was only when your world was threatened with destruction that you became what you are now? Yes. Well, that's where we are. You say we're on the brink of destruction, and you're right, but it's only on the brink that people find the will to change. Only at the precipice do we evolve. And definitely be fun with a self-serious Batman. I don't want this film to be humorless, and Cleese would help bring that comedic relief. So John Cleese as Alfred. As for our main character, there are a ton of options I love for a younger Batman that would work incredibly well, but this one is older, more seasoned. Now, the Batman I'm casting should be more comfortable in the cape and be a pretty much a veteran at this point. I want someone who can play the darker side of Batman, but the suave nature of Bruce Wayne. It's also important that the character can nail that bad voice as well. We don't want to end up with something that feels unnatural. Obviously, I want an actor who can take out Batman, but someone who can also portray a mentor and eventually a father. I love Josh Brolin for this, but he's already played Cable and Thanos. I think his voice in those personas might be too interlinked. He's also 5'8", which doesn't scream Batman to me. So that's why I thought the only choice here, and my first choice, is Carl Urban. The man has enough star power to pull you in, and has been in amazing franchises like Lord of the Rings or even Star Trek, so he can hold himself under the weight of Batman. But I want him to take on Batman because I can actually see him as Batman. He's 6'1", he's built for the role. But more importantly, his entire career up to this point might as well be an audition for Batman. And Dread, it shows he can act his ass off with only the lower half of his face. And he shows you you can have that confidence and that bad voice and definitely can don the bat suit. i tell you what I think. I think if we had executed you on the bust, Mama would have let us walk out of here. What she doesn't want is you take him back to the sector house. She doesn't want you interrogated. She's afraid of what you might say, and that's got me curious. In Star Trek, he shows that he can play confident intelligence, as we'd see in Bruce Wayne. You joined to see if you could live up to him. You spent all this time trying to be George Kirk, and now you're wondering just what it means to be Jim. And in The Boys, he plays someone who is on a mission and consumed by it. A lone wolf who realizes they need others, which is very Batman-esque. As well, he takes on Huey as an apprentice, per se, which shows he can lean into that role that we're trying to cast as well. He has literally shown us he can play every single side of the character we're setting up within this universe. I'm wondering when you'd remember you left your helmet behind. Sir, a helmet can interfere with my psychic abilities. I think a bullet might interfere with some more. So Carl Urban as Batman. So there are my cast for the first four roles within a Batman franchise. Let me know who you'd cast in the roles. We will be getting to the Robins next, which is awesome and super fun, as well as obviously getting into those villains. So subscribe so you don't miss out on that. As I said, let me know your choices in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.